Hey everyone, it's Mark. This is my recap for Pokemon Horizons Episode 4, The Treasure That Washed Ashore. This was the 1236th episode of the Pokemon anime, and I apologize for this review being a few days late. I've had quite the weekend. Let's just get started talking about the episode. We get things started by seeing Liko waking up one morning, and today is the first time she's wearing anything other than her school uniform. While she's showing off her new look, she explains how she signed up for some online classes in order to continue traveling on the airship. Before anything else can happen, Liko and Sprigatito hear a strange noise. When they go outside, Fue Coco is singing? But when it notices Liko, Fue Coco panics, falls down into the bucket of water, and runs off in embarrassment. Okay. Anyways, Liko goes to say hello to the rest of the rising Volt tacklers. She's still feeling like an outsider around all of these adults. Free tells Liko that her assignment on the airship is to be the lookout in the observation deck, and she's really happy to be given her own job. Saying that, all she does on the observation deck is observe Sprigatito sunbathing again as she continues writing the notes about Sprigatito that she started back in episode 1. Elsewhere on the ship, there's an issue that's causing them to lose altitude, and Freed's only option is to land on a nearby island, which he seems to recognize. So I guess the crew is going to be hanging out here until they can fix the problem. Orla identifies the issue as the ship having some tears, and Freed thinks he can go ask someone that will be able to help them. He heads out to the wing deck to get Charizard, who's playing with Foycoco. Freed sets off to go look for help, and Foycoco is so devastated about having to say goodbye to Charizard that it runs off towards Charizard, but like a big idiot, Foycoco just trips and falls off the ship, unable to stop itself, and now it's sent plummeting to the island below. There's not a lot of civilization on this island, but coincidentally, this is the place that Roy lives, which is about to become very important. Meanwhile, Liko is feeding the Pokemon on the airship when she notices that Foycoco is missing, and she starts to think back to when they caught Foycoco singing earlier this morning. Ludlow jumps in, shocking Liko, and he explains that Foycoco was singing, but as soon as it notices someone listening to its song, Foycoco will stop. Gee, Ludlow sure is knowledgeable about Pokemon, it's almost like he should host a video series where he gives tips to young trainers. Anyways, Liko's search takes her over to the wing deck where Sprigatito notices Foycoco's trail, and when they investigate further, they deduce that Foycoco must have fallen off the ship, so now they decide to search for Foycoco on this island. Checking in with the lonely Firecroc, it's sad to be alone, but quickly cheers up when it smells food, and it immediately begins demolishing these berries. Elsewhere, Roy is already assigned into his online class, and we see him chatting with some of his classmates who are all talking about their Pokemon. We learn that Roy doesn't have any Pokemon yet himself, and no one on the island is a trainer either, which is kind of surprising. Roy says he's got a plan though, which involves his weird Pokeball. Jumping around to the other groups on the island, Foycoco has found some kind of hut, probably smelling more food. At the same time, Liko and Sprigatito have just discovered the site of Foycoco's previous meal, and this is bad timing because they get pinned for the crime of eating the berries, which belong to some wild grass and bug types. Before we get to see what happens next, we go back to Roy, who just finished class and is watching a Neato Thing video. He eventually runs off towards his secret base, which just so happens to be the place that Foycoco found earlier. Predictably, the place is trashed, and when Roy tries to find the culprit, he starts to hear a strange sound. We can tell that the noise is Foycoco singing, but Roy searches all over for it, wanting to find what causing this noise. And sure enough, Roy does find Foycoco singing all on its own. Once again, Foycoco is surprised and embarrassed to find out that someone heard it singing, so it runs off the edge of a cliff. But luckily, Roy is there to catch it. Okay, now the scene changes to Roy's house, where Freed is talking with the person he said he knows on this island, and that person turns out to be Roy's grandfather, who's kind of indignant to Professor Freed, but he shakes off the professor title. Back over with Roy, he's asking Foycoco if it came from the Bodhi thing, which I found hilarious. Roy then asks Foycoco to sing for him, and Foycoco wants none of that, but it really starts to warm up to Roy when he says that Foycoco has a great voice, and the two of them share a nice moment singing together. From this calm, peaceful scene, we finally catch up with Liko and Sprigatito, who have been getting chased all across the island by those wild Pokemon. They are eventually saved by Roy, who tries to help them out while also watching over Foycoco. Liko wants to know who this stranger is and what he's doing with Foycoco, but there's no time for that now, and the two of them manage to escape over by this cove. They finally explain what's going on and introduce themselves themselves and the conversation shifts when Roy takes out his mysterious Pokeball. He says that it won't open, so he assumes it's empty. However, being a trainer is his dream, and Roy starts talking about this ancient adventurer guy who I think is going to be an important plot point in the long term. There's no time to linger on that though because our heroes are shocked to find themselves surrounded once again by all the wild Pokemon. Liko doesn't hesitate this time, commanding Sprigatito to use Leafage, and this attack is consistently powerful now. It is definitely getting the job done. Fuecoco tries to help, but its flamethrower is definitely not getting the job done. It's clear to see that this thing can't use Fire-type moves yet. The wild Pokemon can use String Shot though, and they capture everyone and drag them away. They eventually arrive at that tree hollow from way earlier, and yeah, Liko is like, Fuecoco, I knew it was you. 
Luckily for them, it's free to the rescue, but he tells Charizard to hold off. He doesn't want to fight the wild Pokemon. Instead, he and Captain Pikachu rush straight at the wild Pokemon, jumping and dodging their string shot attempts, which ends up falling on top of the Pokemon themselves. Freed finishes the job by giving them all berries, and this finally calms everything down. With our heroes now freed, hold on a second, they were freed by Freed. Okay, anyways, I think Roy recognizes Freed, who doesn't really acknowledge his title of Pokemon Professor, but Liko picks up on this, and yeah, I guess we never really established that Freed was a Pokemon Professor prior to this episode. Moving on from that, it's a happy end of this story as Liko and Roy gather up a ton of berries to make up for what happened, and then Charizard carries everyone back to the airship. Roy stays behind to go back home, and Fuecoco is excited to have met Roy, but our new hero's expression goes from happy to sad when he realizes that this is goodbye for him and Fuecoco. Later that night, Sprigatito wakes Liko up, and they can hear Fuecoco singing again on its own. At the same time, Roy is lying awake, staring at his Pokeball, and Liko is asking her Cellfire Pendant shown again. Oh yeah, I didn't really mention this, did I? Earlier, when Roy and Liko finally got near each other, Roy's Pokeball started to glow, and the same thing happened to Liko's pendant. It was almost like they were responding to each other. Speaking of the pendant, the episode ends with a scene in an entirely new location. This rando is talking to Emetheo about Liko's pendant. Clearly, the explorers are still hot on their trail. The conversation doesn't really go anywhere, though, and we fade to black as we see the explorer's submarine heading off towards Liko and the rising Volt Tacklers. Another great episode to keep the momentum going at the start of Pokemon Horizons. I know a lot of people are loving the way this series is going so far, and you can count me in on that as well. Not only is this series looking good visually, but the characters, plot, and storytelling all continue to flourish. In every episode so far, there have been so many little moments and details that I've appreciated. It's no secret that my episode reviews for Pokemon Horizons have all been longer than normal because there's just so much to discuss every single week. And sure, we are only three weeks into this new series, and the first four episodes of any new series of the Pokemon anime also probably had a lot to talk about, and maybe by the time we're at like episode 34 of Horizons, things will have slowed down dramatically and we won't have a lot to talk about. But honestly, I feel like these episodes are laying such a good foundation and planting so many seeds that I'm pretty confident this series is going to be really, really good in the future. Just this episode alone, we heard about this ancient adventurer from Roy that I'm sure will be important. We got to see Freed interact with Roy's grandfather, and clearly those two have a relationship that will be explored further as this series progresses. I mentioned the detail about Liko's pendant and Roy's Pokeball causing each other to glow. It's like the items are linked in some way, but we don't know how. All we know so far is that both Liko and Roy got these mysterious items from their grandparents. And what about that Explorers segment at the end? They confirmed that Emetheo, Zur, and Konya are working for a bigger organization than just the three of them. This Master Gibeon, or whatever his name is, will clearly be a major antagonist in this series. So that's another layer of the story that's still yet to be revealed. On top of all of those small details that probably will take several dozens of episodes for us to learn the truth about them all, Pokemon Horizons is just fun. The setting is ever-changing and continues to be exciting. The characters are expressive, and they each have their own distinct personality. The most amount of attention has gone into Liko, and I have seen pretty much universal approval of the Pokemon anime's new protagonist. It's too early to tell with Roy just yet, and I mean, it's obviously too early to tell with any of these characters, we're only 4 episodes in. But so far, I think the anime is doing a great job starting fresh after making what I am sure was an incredibly difficult decision to move on from Ash Ketchum. One of the things that I'm glad seems to be continuing is Liko narrating a lot of her experiences. We are still hearing her internal dialogue throughout the episodes, and this is such an interesting perspective to me. It adds to the storyline, as well as making us feel closer to Liko as we watch. I'm not sure how close Roy is feeling to Liko. I have no doubt there will be many people who immediately begin shipping these two, which is definitely not my thing. So far in this episode, they just seem like good friends. It would have been really easy to make Liko blush after Roy saved her, but we didn't even get a hint of that, so there's probably my one and only shipping update I will ever do in one of my episode reviews. Oh yeah, I need to give this episode a rating. As you can probably tell, I really liked it. With that said, I'm giving this episode a 7.5 out of 10 rating. Even though this episode was not the best thing, ever, it was a fun introduction to Roy and establishes he and Fuecoco's relationship, but Horizons continues to take things slow when it comes to telling the bigger story. So while this episode only gets a 7.5 rating for me, it has planted so many seeds that I am confident future episodes will be worthy of 8s, 9s, and hopefully 10s, but right now we're just building up to that point, so that's why I gave this episode the rating that I did. I wonder what you thought about this episode. Honestly, reviewing these early episodes of a new series takes me back to when I started this channel. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I just wanted to talk about the new episodes of the Pokemon anime 
anime, and over three years later, here I am. I started off by just using a free picture editing app to make my thumbnails and a free video editing software as well, and to this day, I still use both of those free tools to make my videos. So really, as long as you have a decent computer, you can make your own videos too. Pokemon Journeys gave us so many new faces in the Pokemon anime YouTube community, and I want to see the new channels that start making videos on Pokemon Horizons too. Okay, let's touch on the preview for the next episode. Once again, it's a direct continuation from where we left off this time. Roy is going to join back up with the Rising Gold Tacklers. I'm guessing this episode will end with Roy catching Foy Coco and joining the crew, but we shall see what the explorers have to say about that. I did just want to mention something about my Discord server real quick. We just recently hosted a Pokemon Showdown tournament that was a metronome special, and the lucky winner who stood above all the rest was none other than the loyal Bandito. So shout out to him for winning the tournament, and if you want to get in on the battles in the future, go ahead and click the link to join my Discord server down in the description. I'll happily take you on. Before you go though, be sure to click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys next time.